So, uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Muriel Franco. I am a junior research at the University of Zurich. And um, I have, uh, I have uh, dedicated my time uh, in research about NFV uh, issues and uh, problem identification in the past five, uh, three years, part in Brazil, part in uh, University of Zurich in Switzerland. And the main idea of this talk is uh, investigating literature and try to, to highlight some um, research trends uh, in, um, in academy about uh, uh, NFV uh, issues. And I also try to uh, identify some future directions for uh, NFV uh, at all. So here we have a brief agenda about this presentation. Uh, first, I will introduce some basic concepts about computer networks and uh, NFV. Uh, introduce some general challenges uh, since NFV was released, that is um, well explored during the, the last years. And uh, highlight the research trends uh, by using a, a methodology to literature investigation. Uh, also, uh, provide some market opportunities regarding the, the, uh, the, the market uh, of NFV in the future. And uh, conclusions try to um, highlight and forecast some, uh, some things about how NFV can evolve and uh, be uh, largely adopted uh, in the next years. So uh, first, uh, we need to define a basic concept from computer networks, that is what is network function. Uh, basic, I, I can define that a network function is a network node or a, a physical hardware, a middle box, with a well-defined uh, uh, behavior. For example, we can, it can be uh, a simple IP, um, IP tables um, based file, or also a, a complex network accelerator or compressor, uh, for example. Uh, when I use it, for example, connect, uh, in a network service, Google, Netflix, or, uh, so, and so on. Uh, the, the user connection is forwarded between different middle box that can be a, a DPI, a firewall, um, I don't know, a quart of service, um, accelerator, a load balancer, and so on. And uh, what is the problem with the middle box? It, uh, most, uh, most of them is very expensive. It's not easy to manage and um, make some uh, configuration and operations when we have a lot of middle box to manage, then we have to, to expend a lot of uh, money with uh, team to, to go to, to make some, uh, uh, to, correct some, to correct some problems in the middle box or to manage or to deploy uh, at all. And this middle box uh, in the most of time is very expensive. So for this, uh, NFV has uh, emerged as a, a disruptive technology that uh, not only reduce the, um, the cost, and uh, simplifies the management, but also uh, allow us to, to make some evolution in the network core. Uh, basic NFV, NFV allow us to virtualize such network functions, move them from uh, middle box, dedicated middle box, to run in any uh, kind of uh, virtualization solution. So it, it, it is um, a very uh, good opportunity about uh, cost reduction and uh, provide some agility and flexibility uh, regarding NFV, um, regarding networks at all. For example, one of the main uh, benefits uh, from NFV is delivery agility and flexibility. We can, for example, make available a service, uh, a, a complex service or a network function to supply some specific demands in few seconds. And also we have uh, flexibility to research allocation and uh, to configure a, a network service, a network function to uh, supply specific demands for each uh, user. We have also selected time to market. For example, we can develop um, a network function and make it available for a customer or uh, an end user or service provider in few seconds also. And of course, we, have, uh, we can redu uh, reduce the cost, not only the capital cost, because you don't need uh, to buy a middle box more. We can use come, come, uh, come out of the shelf service. And we have also um, reducing the operation uh, expensive because we can uh, use, for example, um, autonomous system, autonomous platforms or solutions to deal with a, a lot of network functions at the same time and to deal with uh, a lot of information that will be available for managing and orchestrate such, via, such uh, network functions. So um, NFV is very nice. Uh, okay, we can reduce costs, accelerate. Uh, as a time to market, flexibility, but it's not simple to do. It's not only we virtualize a network function and it will work fine uh, to compound a service or to, to provide a complex service in an easy way. So, if what's required 
mainly to provide an efficient deploy of such VNFs, uh, to orchestrate and also manage such VNFs in an efficient way. So for this, um, uh, NFV uh, initial idea was released uh, by ATSI, ATSI, that is the uh, European Telecommunication Standard Institute. It was released as a white paper in 2012. And since that, a lot of standards and um, the reports to define which we need to implant uh, an FV environment was released. Uh, I can highlight uh, one of the most important, uh, in my opinion, that was uh, the, the, the first use case for an FV that was released in 2013. It was uh, basically to us um, five use cases, which includes the virtualization of um, mobile core networks and content delivered networks. So uh, we can um, make evolution in the core of network and uh, to the uh, edge of the computers, of the computer networks. Uh, in the same year, the concept architecture of NFV was, uh, was released. It is the, uh, basically, it is the standard that we need to, to follow to impl implant or to implement solutions that will deal with uh, NFV and uh, virtual network functions at all. And in 2014, the, man the management the management of framework was uh, proposed by ATSCI also. Um, uh, I can say that this framework is the base for any solution regarding management of uh, VNFs, uh, both to, to, to academy and also to uh, both to academy and uh, industry. So we need to, to use this framework as base to build some solution to to manage and orchestrate such uh, virtual network functions. Here we have the architecture. Uh, the, um, the concept architecture of NFV. So we have basically an NFV infrastructure that is compounded by a, a substrate, a virtualization layer. Here you have the uh, virtualization resource. And uh, the VNF is uh, hosting up to this uh, NFV infrastructure. We have element management to, deal, uh, to, to provide some APIs to communicate other solutions with the VNFs. And uh, the most important, I can say that, is the these uh, three components that is uh, with compound the management the management orchestration framework. This is the orchestrator, the NF manager, and the uh, virtualized infrastructure managers. The orchestrator is in charge of uh, a global management, uh, mainly focused on resource management and service management. Uh, the VNF manager controls all of the uh, life cycle of uh, a VNF, and the virtualized infrastructure manager is. Uh, uh, is in charge of con uh, control the resource allocation and all of the NFV uh, infrastructure. So um, this architecture, for example, can be um, constructed using different open source <coughs> frameworks and platforms available. For example, you can construct NFV infrastructure by using OpenStack uh, or OpenDaylight or other uh, well-known solutions. And we have uh, a lot of well-defined um, frameworks to manage orchestration, for example, I can, uh, I can say uh, the OpenStack Tacker, that is uh, a, a good solution because we have a full uh, a, a, a integration, a good integration with OpenStack um, virtualization. So we can use OpenStack Tacker, for example, to orchestrate and manage the NFs that is running in an um, OpenStack based uh, virtualization system. I have an open source MANU that was uh, released in 2014. It's a, a very, um, you can say, uh, a, a very nice project about, uh, uh, about management of, uh, of uh, VNFs. We have open battle, and um, of course, we have other relevant solutions uh, for NFV already available. For example, the Linux Foundation um, maintains the OP NFV project, uh, which is a, a collaborative platform for, for uh, developing and evolution of NFV. It's a consortium of a lot of a different um, uh, open source companies that is trying to provide and incentive the evolution and um, adoption of NFV in large scale. So, uh, okay, now uh, there is some challenges for NFV that uh, have been spotted since it was released. Uh, by taking this, this challenge, placement, management orchestration, and security, uh, in mind we can um, analyze and have some ideas about the current state of the art uh, about NFV. Uh, first, of uh, first of them, uh, there is a classical problem for uh, NFV that is the placement. Basically, the question is, uh, where is the best place to deploy a, a VNF in an efficient way? Of course. For example, 
we can uh, chain one or more uh, VNFs to build a complete service. And uh, it's not a trivial um, issue because we need to know where is the best, uh, the best infrastructure or the best place or best technology to use, for example, to compound a security service. You can uh, deploy a file, a DPI, and a IPS, for example. Uh, okay, how we can deploy such uh, network functions, such VNFs, to construct a service? So we need to, to take into account some important, important <laughs> issues about latency, quality of service, resource, resource available, and of course, monetary costs. That is one of the main issues about uh, use uh, NFB. Other important uh, challenge, general challenge, is the manage of, manage of uh, endocrustration of uh, virtual network functions. For example, how uh, to orchestrate and monitor such VNFs? We need to build some monetary solutions, APIs. Uh, we have a lot of challenge and space for works in such area. And when we can migrate it, for example, how to identify some misbehaviors or some problems in uh, the VNF or in the SFC, in the service function chain, to, to know, ah, I need to migrate such VNF because this is a bottleneck in the service at all. So it's um, a very important question. And a lot of techniques to identify misbehaviors, bottlenecks, and other VNF related problems uh, have been explored by Academy. Um, most of them I use, I try to use uh, artificial intelligence and information visualization to det uh, detect and identify such problems. And other important question, of course, as computer networks at all, is security. We need to, uh, to provide trust communication among uh, NFV components. Uh, I mean, uh, the orchestrator and NFV manager, for example, uh, can be uh, placed in an infrastructure and need to manage and orchestrate uh, VNFs or uh, a, a composition of VNFs that can be deployed in, around the globe in, any, in different infrastructure. So we need to provide a, a trust communication between such components it's um, um, an issue that uh, I think <coughs> requires attention in terms of security. And um, the inter interoperability uh, among different vendors is very important. Uh, because, for example, if I, I develop a VNF and uh, Red Hat develop other VNF, and I want to use both VNFs to compound a service, uh, and uh, I, I, need to, uh, I want to use OpenStack Attacker, for example, to orchestrate such VNFs. I need to, pro, uh, I need to ensure that uh, different, VNF, uh, dif different VNFs from different vendors will be integrated and have uh, interoperability with OpenStack Attacker, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's an uh, important question also. Uh, we need to, to guarantee also the interoperability, interoper interoperability <laughs> between, uh, for example, legacy net uh, network functions. I can use, for example, a, a middle box to put in the middle of ISFC, a VNF, a middle box, and a VNF, for example, how it can uh, work. So uh, it is relevant questions, not only about security, but about uh, others' issues. And of course, you have tweets and the counter uh, measures. Uh, I think um, uh, as NFV arise as a, uh, a solution, as a real solution, I think a lot of new tweets will be uh, arise. And uh, Calder measures to, to deal with such new tweets is uh, a challenge to the next few years for, um, for deal with some uh, security aspects about NFV and uh, NFV environments uh, at all. So now uh, we'll highlight some, identify some research trends by analyzing a lot of um, important congress and conference uh, in the computer networks and computer management. I can identify three uh, main research trends in computer networks, that is management orchestration related issues. That is a vast, um, a, a vast scenario of problems we have. 5G, uh, NFV as I enable for 5G networks is a, a really uh, important aspect also. There, is a lot, there are a lot of um, resource about that, and business models to, to build um, a lucrative and a profitable um, market to market landscape to NFV in the future. So, um, okay, one of current research talk related to management orchestration framework is um, how to detect VNF performance and identify bottlenecks in a SFC, in a service function chain. Uh, for this, uh, uh, we have a, a lot of uh, works in the academy exploring real monitoring solutions to tackle this problem. 
for example, we have an FV perf that was proposed in NFV CDN in 2016, three years uh, ago. Uh, basically, it, it is a, a, a solution that uh, makes some performance monitoring and uh, bottlenecks detection tool in NFV and the SFCs at all. It basically sniffs packets and uh, on our VM to VM uh, communication path, computes the delays and throughputs, and uh, use these instruments to identify bottlenecks in real time. Other solution, for example, is the perfect checker that was proposed in a work published in the uh, network and management uh, conference in the past year, in 2018. Such a work monitors the elements uh, of the software data plane uh, and provide performance reports, uh, for example, graphs and uh, visualizations to highlight bottlenecks into the NFV service. Other uh, candidates to solve this kind of problem, that is, identify uh, performance bottlenecks, I can say that is uh, machine learning based solutions. We have a lot of works uh, in this uh, direction. Um, for example, in this work, uh, that was published in the Communication Magazine in January in the past year. Uh, the authors dis discussed the, the role that machine uh, learning can play uh, in re uh, regarding NFV issues. The authors highlight, for example, research opportunities by using network uh, machine learning to failure prevention detection of uh, degradation patterns in NFV enabled networks. And um, I, I can say that th there are a lot of opportunities that you can explore by using machine learning to identify patterns and uh, misbehaviors in a SFC or in a unique NFV, in a unique VNF, for example. Uh, in the other work published in the Network and Management Symposium in 2018, uh, our work to, to identify who is guilty in a SFC uh, was proposed. This work proposed an adaptive algorithm uh, based on linear regression and neural networks to adjust the model uh, parameters according to environment particulars. For example, you can use uh, the, the type of VNFs, the number of NF, VNFs in a SFC to, uh, to, to train, to, to teach the algorithm the, uh, how it can uh, detect which is the, the guilty for a bottleneck or misbehavior or a problem of performance or a problem of performance in a SFC. So there are a lot of opportunities in, in such a, a direction. I see. Other uh, important point that we need to consider is in management orchestration of uh, VNFs or SFCs is the composition of SFCs. How can I um, create uh, a service, uh, a composition of VNFs to provide a service in a secure, adaptive uh, way? <coughs> so there are uh, some works in academy that are trying to solve uh, this problem. Uh, for example, we have, uh, we had in an edition of uh, IEEE Communications Magazine in 2017, uh, a framework to facilitate the development of uh, NFV architecture components. If you focus on uh, SFC, it was proposed um, as, a, as a demonstration. Also, we have a, a scenario, a, a, a use case in this, uh, in this journal. Uh, different algorithms for uh, VNF placement can be compared by using such solution and also adapted to meet some uh, SFC high dynamic demands. So it is a, a, a very nice work to, to know about dynamic and secure composition. Other work, for example, is uh, OpenNet VM that was published in SIGCOM 2018. I can say that SIGCOM is uh, one of the most important congress in computer networks around the world. Uh, the OpenNet VM, which is an open source uh, NFV platform to accelerate research and development of uh, software-based networks at all, uh, was presented as a demo also. So it, it uh, was implemented and the demonstration was provided. Uh, and uh, basically, OpenNet VM creates an abstraction layer over DPDK to allow the chain of uh, VNFs running the same host. I can say that uh, the, the unique limitation, limitation, no, depend, the unique dependence of this work is uh, uh, the work proposed that it's obligatory to use Docker, but it's only dependence, it's not a limitation, of course not. So it's only a dependence, you need to use Docker. You can use Docker and 
uh, create high performance uh, service chains <coughs> in NFV. Uh, so, other relevant issues regarding uh, SFC construction is uh, the validation of uh, such SFCs that was uh, created. For example, I mean, uh, when I, I talk about validation, is how can I validate that uh, SFC is running uh, as uh, proposed or as promised? And um, how to guarantee the integrity of the packets that uh, are being uh, forwarded between the SFC? For this, we have different kind of works. For example, we have SFC uh, path tracer that enables the identification of problem in SFC uh, and simplify the, comp uh, the configuration by using um, visualizations to, to, demonstrate, uh, to show the whole path uh, traversed by um, packets in a given uh, SFC. Such work was developed in the HP Enterprise in the south of Brazil. So uh, I can say that it's a kind of tool uh, from industry to validate the solutions that have been developed uh, in EHP, for example. Uh, other works uh, that helps uh, during the validation and configuration of SFCs uh, was presented in NetSoft 2018, that is ContainerNet. Uh, the ContainerNet was proposed for uh, support in the creation and uh, local execution to validate uh, hybrid SFCs. Um, composed of both container-based uh, and virtual machine-based uh, VNFs. So we can create, for example, a service and put a uh, IP tables-based file running in Docker and a uh, DPI running a Ubuntu, Ubuntu VM machine, for example. So it uh, provides some intelligibility uh, to create SFCs using different technologies and solutions. And uh, other uh, important <coughs> thing about, that's a very general, problem is placement, migration, and resource allocation uh, by considering um, SFCs or VNFs uh, independent. Uh, there are a lot of problems try to solve uh, the problem of performance optimization <coughs> resource management. Uh, for example, uh, we have IP, uh, hyper NFV uh, that uh, was proposed to minimize the lattice ring, uh, when running uh, large numbers of VNFs in k-based uh, NFV infrastructure. It was published uh, in 2017, and we have, for example, in October uh, 2018, in the uh, ETPOE communications letters, uh, we have a, a work that provides algorithm for the cloud and uh, bandwidth for such a location uh, in multi-provided NFV environments uh, that was proposed to take into account different infrastructure costs. These authors in this, uh, uh, in this paper, in this work, uh, uh, provide some, some results that demonstrate that this work can save 65% uh, uh, more in terms of uh, money to, to deploy a, a VNF in the infrastructure uh, uh, regarding the, when, compa when compared with solutions that doesn't, doesn't take account uh, important aspects of NFV. So we can use, for example, an algorithm for cloud computing, of course, to uh, resource allocation for VNFs. But it's not so efficient when we, we can use uh, a lot of information provided by the NFV environment to try to, to identify and to, to provide which is the best way to put a VNF, for example. So it can, it, it's a, a very important question to, to deal about resource management for specific uh, demands and uh, particularities, particularities of end users and VNF demands. Uh, and uh, as NFV has a strong economic appeal, of course, um, cost and energy savings are one of the main goals to the, the next years. So um, we have different works trying to, to address energy savings and uh, cost efficiency for uh, NFT. Uh, one of, uh, in this work, for example, uh, the authors investigated how to add a VNF into an existing service chain uh, in a way to not impact negatively in the infrastructure costs. So if you have ISFC, for example, running the same uh, host or infrastructure provider. And you need to put other uh, VNF in this SFC. How can put this to not impact, or not impact much, uh, in the, the cost or in the, in, in the economic aspects of this infrastructure provider? Other works are focused most in the issues regarding uh, energy efficiency. Uh, for example, in the, 
International Conference on Communications in 2018, a work that joined optimization of VNF placement and the traffic halting for energy efficiency in telecom networks uh, were proposed. Um, I can say that um, currently telecom networks uh, is one of the most interested in um, energy savings uh, for, uh, by using NFV because, of course, there are a lot of opportunities to uh, make innovation and evolution in the network core that is uh, directly related to telecom networks providers. Uh, and so also there are several works focusing on NFV the potential as a enable to uh, 5G networks or 5G core. Uh, therefore, academy uh, and industry are interested uh, in how to use NFV for supporting NFV, um, IoT, and uh, edge computing as well. So uh, in this way, there are efforts mainly to, to build fully frameworks for management and uh, deployment of VNFs to sustain 5G networks. In general view, uh, I can say that uh, these works are splitting networks elements into uh, VNFs to, to address the demands of 5G uh, era. For example, to provide uh, ultra low latency applications and uh, dynamic resource uh, allocation for 5G and IoT um, devices or applications. In a talk, for example, published in uh, January past in the uh, IEEE communications letters, um, Researchers discussed, discussed a realistic 5G scenario by considering NFV as a, a player that involves resource allocation and uh, orchestration in a cloud-enabled radio uh, access network, taking into account the dynamics of uh, 100,000 uh, of persons movement in a crown uh, event. So, uh, um, since NFV and 5G uh, networks are becoming a reality, I think a lot of new opportunities uh, and challenges uh, are imagined together. And uh, one of these challenges is uh, how to provide performance to, to sustain or to address the new applications of uh, 5G uh, year. In this uh, year, for example, um, in, a, in a conference, uh, a work to, to provide uh, ultra, ultra high qual quality multimedia by creating a NFV-based uh, dynamic adaptive TV streaming system were proposed. But we have uh, other works trying to, to, to take some issues about uh, edge computing. For example, in this work, researchers uh, adapted NFV technology for mobile edge computing and uh, allocated cloud computing features near the base uh, station of radio access networks, which resulted in an extremely fast uh, service access to user equipment. And uh, we have uh, other opportunities about, uh, opportunities, no, challenges about uh, business perspectives. I think business models should be improved in the next uh, few years, and there are a lot of um, resources in such direction. Uh, the current works uh, are in trying to, to propose business models based on auctions, fixed price, and uh, pay as you go. Uh, such models are inspired in um, well-known cloud uh, models. However, I think that a lot of new information from VNFs and end users' uh, demands uh, must be considered to explore an FV in an effective way to create business uh, models uh, and put uh, different kind of players to explore the market of uh, NFV. NFV as a service, for example, is a, is a research topic right now. There are a lot of works trying to to provide not only VNF as a service, but also infrastructure uh, as a service to support uh, such VNFs. So infrastructure supply uh, is a research topic uh, right now. And distribution instantiation of VNFs uh, as a service also is a, a emerging topic. We have, for example, two uh, projects, Tinova project and Fend project uh, was uh, released to to basically to, to provide a, a where, uh, uh, to provide a place where end users can uh, purchase a VNF available in a catalog, for example, and the such VNF can be instantiated in a uh, in few minutes, in, remotely or in a uh, infrastructure provided by the end user. I mean, the idea is that uh, end users can buy VNFs in a similar way that uh, currently smartphone users can buy 
uh, applications in App Store or Google Play. I'm part of Fend Project. This is a, a project that uh, is supported by uh, Brazilian government. Uh, our, main inter uh, our main intentions in Fend Project is to propose an NFV ecosystem that simplifies um, not only the process on, of acquisition and instantiation, but also the management of uh, VNFs. For this, we, we introduced a marketplace for VNFs, uh, where end users can, for example, uh, buy a VNF, and uh, we can uh, instantiate this VNF by using OpenStack Tacker in an infrastructure provided by us, as an infrastructure provider, or, for, uh, or directly in the infrastructure that client can provide the credentials for us, for example. So, uh, okay, so taking account these uh, research challenges discussed and uh, research trends, and assuming that uh, most of them will be solved in the next uh, few years, I can say that the, the market of NFV is very optimistic for the future. Today we have um, up to $5 billion of dollars being uh, spent in NFV at all for hardware, software, uh, and so on. And based on different reports for NFV, uh, in 2024, we will have uh, up to 71 billion of dollars uh, in NFV market at all. For example, the acquisition of BNFs, uh, hardware to build NFV enables infrastructures and operations related to um, managed orchestration of such uh, NFV uh, environments will be uh, one of the most part of such uh, amount of money. So a consumer capital should be, should be also invested also for um, staff training, for example, to migrate uh, a model as today for, to, to network uh, for NFV uh, models. Uh, today we have, for example, um, so in this table we can uh, see which is the um, the sector that is most uh, interested in NFV and uh, investing more in NFV solutions. Uh, first at all, of course, we have uh, IT sectors and telecom uh, providers, or telecom networks, uh, followed by uh, bank and financial systems, and uh, healthcare. I can consider also that in the next years, uh, the government uh, can be a, a good player for NFV because of the IoT uh, evolution, smart cities, and a lot of opportunities to uh, use NFV as a neighbor to uh, sustainability, communication between different, um, different sectors in smart cities, for example. Uh, today, uh, most of uh, such values is uh, spent with hardware, of course, to create uh, NFV environments, with software to management and orchestration, and uh, not much is uh, spent with services, but I think in the future, this uh, amount with service can be uh, improved because uh, as an FV uh, becoming a reality, I think a lot of innovative services or VNFs uh, will arise and uh, a lot of money can be spent, for example, for developers that create an innovative service can be paid to uh, one, uh, one network operator buy such VNF to, to, for a specific demand or to, or, or for example, um, rent this VNF pay as you go. I don't know, but I think uh, there are a lot of opportunities to developers to create innovative services in future and be paid for that. So uh, now uh, we'll talk about some market opportunities regarding VNF as a service, infrastructure supply as a service, infrastructure as a service, of course, and uh, smart cities and IoT applications. Uh, so first, I believe that uh, NFV as a service or VNF as a service is the, the feature. Uh, I can say, for example, a model where uh, Developers can uh, develop innovative services. For example, uh, I as a research can develop an innovative service to, uh, to deal with DDoS attack. Uh, I, I construct a, a, a service by using a IP tables uh, file, a DPI, by using network, uh, neural network models, I don't know, and I can create and I can put that in a marketplace, for example, a catalog of VNFs. And uh, one operator that uh, has a specific demand uh, can uh, contract, uh, I don't know, can buy or can rent such VNF. So uh, there is a, a lot of opportunities to developers being incentivated to 
to develop new, uh, new innovation services, innovative services, and put that uh, available to any uh, user, and user interested. And users, of course, uh, can be one of the most uh, benefited by that, because can contract service on demand. Oh, my network is under attack right now. And I know that uh, the guys from, the researchers from the MIT develop a new uh, solution that can be deployed as a VNF to solve my problem. Okay, I will contract a service, for example, for uh, 30 minutes, only, only to mitigate the attack. So there are a lot of opportunities. And when we talk about uh, NFV and VNFs, we are talking about a uh, few minutes, few seconds, to, to, to have such a network function uh, deployed and available for uh, your network. And service providers can explore such market uh, by building um, a bit, uh, profitable business models to offer, uh, distribute, and also manage such VNFs, for example, to orchestrate, to detect some problems, behaviors, and to, uh, to, to ensure that the, which the end user will contract will be delivered for the, such a, to such a user. So there are a lot of opportunities also. Uh, infrastructure supply uh, is other interesting opportunity because uh, the provision of infrastructures to host VNFs is, uh, is not a, a trivial uh, issue. So uh, as there will be a lot of VNFs available, eventually, for example, um, a trick operator will not have an NFV environment configured to deploy such VNFs. Uh, thus, NFV infrastructure must be available as a service, so we can have an infrastructure provider that uh, make a uh, complete NFV environment available to sustain or to host a VNF contract by end user. It is very similar to platform as uh, Amazon AWS and uh, Microsoft Azure, for example. However, uh, by considering FV, uh, an infrastructure should be able to deal with other metrics and uh, uh, aspects to meet uh, particular demands of each, each user. Uh, and for example, uh, infrastructure provider can, uh, can uh, make available some specific monitoring uh, solutions and uh, I don't know, platforms to uh, problem identification, uh, specifically for each case or each demand of uh, end users. And uh, so that uh, last but not less important scenario that can be explored in a lucrative way is uh, the area of smart cities. I think um, any opportunity described uh, before is valid for this scenario uh, as well. Developer and service providers, for example, can provide uh, customized solutions to supply different areas in smart uh, city and provide uh, ultra high, uh, ultra low latency, for example, applications and uh, innovative services. For example, um, developers can uh, build solutions to ensure low latency uh, and uh, reliable infrastructures for vehicle networks, uh, healthcare. For example, we can uh, make available a solution or infrastructure to sustain uh, video surgeries with reduced costs. Uh, so there are a lot of opportunities, uh, mainly for developers and, of course, for uh, smart cities and uh, uh, digital societies uh, at all. So uh, for the future, I can imagine uh, that uh, NFV will be fully operational in the next, uh, the next few years <coughs> by integrating NFV and uh, software-defined networks, SDN. Uh, we can provide, for example, ultra low latency and dynamic uh, application fastly. Uh, to end user and server provides or for the network core to create uh, innovative uh, different kind of communication and innovative applications in the future. Um, hopefully, of course, uh, cyber attacks will become more complex and sophisticated when we have a lot of network functions being uh, virtualized, uh, being virtualized and a lot of um, issues related to security will be require attention. Uh, I think that should, uh, NFV should be combined with other technologies to improve uh, its capacities. Um, I can say, for example, the hype of blockchain is a, a good opportunity to take some uh, NFV uh, challenges regarding accounting and billing, for example. Currently, uh, I'm working at UZ8 in an um, auction-based solution for uh, NFV infrastructure supply using blockchain smart contracts. For example, uh, if I uh, uh, and the user needs to, to contract uh, a VNF and don't ha doesn't have an uh, infrastructure to, to, to host this VNF, we can use a kind of auction-based um, solution by using blockchain to, re to, to, re to not re require um, a centralized uh, solution. So 
uh, I think there are a lot of opportunities, not only by using blockchain, but other kind of uh, technologies to uh, be, uh, uh, be merged with NFV to, to solve some uh, problems in the uh, still open. And um, I can say that more solutions to simplify, okay, to simplify the management and orchestration of uh, VNFs, NFV, or SFC uh, will, uh, will arise because we will have a lot of uh, number of VNFs and we need to manage and orchestrate such VNFs. So uh, I think artificial intelligence is a, a good opportunity and information visualization as we have in computer networks and computer management to, to uh, provide highlights for end user or network operators uh, identify in an easy and fast way some problems can be a, a, a good friend for NFV in future. So uh, that's it. If you need some, uh, see some of the reference, I will uh, make available the conference. Uh, all the reference is, is, uh, is here. And um, that's it. If you have some questions, we have a few minutes. For example, in the yeah. okay, of course. So this is a challenge. Uh, we need to, or, or for example, uh, Head Head has a marketplace for NF, and I mean NF, and I can buy NF. Uh, for example, Head Head send me the source code of such NF, and I can turn on in my our studio. Or NF as a service, for example, we need to provide some way, for example, this blockchain, is a, a way to uh, rely on that I will contract the NF and uh, the uh, service provider will uh, deliver me what I contract and uh, ensure. It's a kind of, you know, we need to rely on uh, each other. You know how? It's a, a challenge, it's difficult. But uh, I don't know if, if it's a question. Or uh, I would like to understand from a product point of view. Let's say I'm taking an example of the customer service. Uh, I'm just, just a customer who wants some VMs. I go to the, the cloud service store to create my VMs. I have the VMs on there. Now when I talk about NFV as a service, what do I have? Uh, and how would I, will I use it with my own environment of you know, IP environment with my current existing VMs in my private and, and the private cloud? Will it be, like, be able to connect with your, with your NFV service? Or okay, I need to forward the packet from your network to... Yeah. yeah, we need to provide, for example, we can, we can use uh, VPNs, for example. Yeah. 
to, but of course it, it can uh, impact negatively in the performance of the yes. network. Yeah, exactly. It can, but then uh, if there are some latency issues and performance issues by, by doing this, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, why? I mean, what can you do? Yeah, yeah, it's a challenge. It's in office, so there are a lot of uh, opportunities for that. Yeah. Yeah. For example, uh, today we have. That can definitely help people to offer their network. Yeah. Yeah. Today, uh, uh, most of our scenarios is, for example, host the CMSFC in uh, a unique infrastructure, for example. But in, in future, for example, we need to have uh, a VNF being run in Brazil, other in Switzerland, and other here in Czech, for example. And we need to communicate that. How can I do? So it's a problem. Also. How is the LP used in healthcare? What application? For healthcare? I can say for healthcare, for example, uh, mainly is to, uh, to provide infrastructure to supply healthcare communication or IoT. At all, so if you will be used uh, to virtualize some uh, some some some, uh, some functions in the network core to provide, for example, uh, I, I need to make a surgery right now, and uh, it's a video surgery. I don't know uh, that will be live, uh, and I need to, to provide uh, a video, a multimedia or a stream uh, kind of issue. We can use, for example, NFV to uh, to supply some surgery, uh, surgery, for example and uh, make it available to this cost. For healthcare specifically, for example, I can, I can say that we can use uh, NFV or as an enable to communication or to uh, create a, a more generic uh, approach in which we can communicate different kind of de device for healthcare. It's not about, for example, we virtualize uh, the healthcare is to provide a infrastructure <laughs> Uh, in which healthcare can communicate uh, between different devices. Uh, <laughs> it makes sense. Uh, the benefit is for if you still supply, it's not for healthcare uh, specifically, but you can, I don't know, uh, build some uh, services specifically to uh, help in the healthcare or to provide some performance improvements for healthcare device. You know, it's a, a challenge, uh, there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, The performance specifically is not a problem because we can allocate a lot of resources and then we can uh, manage the resources to, 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 uh, to uh, add more resources and do resources. The problem, I feel, is about the communication, for example. If in the box you have cable from one of the box to water, I think the most problem is about latency, maybe. We need to, to create some, so for example, if we have some uh, VNS or company that is a compressor and we need to, to, uh, to zip the packets in uh, one side and deliver to the other VNF and unzip, for example. Because we have some problems related to communication, to latency. But uh, I think the performance will not be the problem in the future, I think. The problem is how to ensure secure communication and not impact negatively in the performance. For example, I can use a VPN. Yeah, I can. But it will be maybe the uh, impact negatively in the latency of the Okay, sorry. If you have some other questions, we can discuss. Uh, thank you.